Hello everyone and welcome to this painting video with myself John. In this one we're going to be painting one of the Davidians from Raging Heroes for our Battle Sisters project. And um, one thing I like to stress, and I'm probably singing this a lot in this project, is that we're trying to create a high contrast, fast colour scheme uh, to do the army in such a way that when it's under camera or from a tabletop distance of you know two three feet if you're standing at a table looking at it it's going to be impactful and it's going to look interesting from that distance you're going to be able to tell what everything is so like our standard battle sister uh, video it's all about making things quick and easy using a lot of contrast paints using a lot of very simple techniques like a little bit of dry brushing and making the primer work for you as best as it can so in general very simple very straightforward so without any further ado let's get stuck in so to begin with our dividian here uh we're going to be doing something a little bit different like in the last video uh or the the basic trooper uh, paint video we used an airbrush to put down the first coat which was uh, army painter spaceship exterior now for this one we're going to be doing the exact same process although there's a couple of differentiations here because there's more skin there's more cloth um but I figured that not everyone wants to use an airbrush or not everybody has an airbrush. So I thought, well, let's do an alternative to that. So in this one, we're going to be using the spaceship exterior again as our base coat, but we're going to be using uh, a dry brush method to apply it just to show that you can still achieve this, uh, the same finish, but without the, the need necessarily of having an airbrush. So what I'm doing is taking my, my uh, dry brush here and then on a piece of, uh, paper back here we're just going to remove most of the paint I'm going to test to see what it's like seems okay and let's give it a go so we're just going to dry brush the whole miniature with our spaceship exterior now this might give a slightly different result because it is going to leave the recesses a little bit darker uh, than using an airbrush because an airbrush is a bit more of a um, a bazooka effect sort of just cover the whole thing so what you might end up seeing is that you might prefer this finish to using an airbrush so we'll just see what happens we'll we'll get this down and as we move on to our subsequent uh, stages with contrast paint you may find you actually like this more and that's totally fine it'll give you a bit more of a, a more sharp sort of detailed finish but I don't believe it's going to do too much to change the overall effect uh, of the miniature itself now because these are resin we've got to be careful up here on the sword while we're dry brushing that we don't want to break that arm or break the hand so let's get a little bit more paint onto the dry brush again test it out on my hand seems okay So yeah, we'll see what what this brings when we start to apply the other colors that we need for the miniature. With the dry brush complete, we can see that we've got a fairly good uh, finish there. What we're going to move on to now is our apothecary white contrast paint, which we're going to apply just onto the areas uh, of her chain sword and her legs because they, she's wearing these big mechanical boot style uh, leg pieces so again we'll just apply the contrast paint over those areas because those are the areas that are going to be white so we'll just continue to do that with the apothecary white now dry we can move on to our second dry brush and as before our second dry brush is Praxetti white so we're going to be using a smaller dry brush for this so I'm just, just gonna set the pot there so you can see. So I'm using a smaller dry brush. And again, with a piece of cloth, we'll rub some of that off again. Check it to see if it's all right, seems fine. And then we'll just start to dry brush over that area. Now we can dry brush the whole thing Praxetti white so we're just going to go ahead and do that as well it adds another shade and we'll keep it to more visible parts of the miniature 
That way we're forcing a little bit of light there. Not too much, but just enough. And if you wonder what I, what I mean when I say not too much, just enough, it's kind of more a, you know when you see it, sort of too much or, or just enough. Because I would say that's probably enough there. I wouldn't want to add uh, much more than that. So let's move our pot away. And the next thing we're going to work on is her cloth, like the main color cloth. So she has a tabard and a hood there. And we're going to use Contrast Blood Angels Red for that. So give it a good shake. Pop the lid. And then we'll get a bit of a smaller brush here. This one ought to do. And what we're going to do is first do the hood. And then we'll do her tabard or her loincloth after that. Once this is done, we're then going to let it dry and then we'll move on to the second cloth color, uh, which will take in the, the wraps that she has on her legs and, her, and on her arms. With the red now dry, we can move on uh, to the other or one of the other colors. This one's going to be Skeleton Horde. Yep, another contrast paint. And we're going to be using this one uh, with a fairly small brush because we want to take in all the uh, the wraps and stuff that are on her here. So all these sort of like bandage-esque materials, I want to keep them that sort of color. So we're just going to whiz around the miniature and basically paint in all these parts. Now we're also going to be taking in the stuff that we left uh, without the red on it as well. We I just wanted the, the tabard and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at painting those in as well to make them look a bit more like parchment so just a matter of taking that paint along those lines with the skeleton horde dry we can now move on to the skin and for that we're going to be using a contrast dark oath flesh we're using this one because we have such a bright base coat that the dark oath actually looks better than the likes of the gilliman flesh which would turn out a little bit too pink here so I prefer that particularly uh, for this particular project. So again, we're going to just get in there, put some on our palette, make sure we have enough on the brush, and then we'll just give all her skin a coat, being careful not to go over anything that we've already painted. With the Dark Oath Flesh now dry, we're going to move on to some gold details. And for that, we're going to be using Army Painter's Bright Gold. So again, just going around the miniature quickly, we'll put some down onto the wet palette. And all we're looking to do is just quickly base coat anything that we want to be gold. So we're going to be looking at the likes of the icon here on her belt with the what appears to be a sensor hanging below it. So we'll be painting all that in too. And we'll try and pick out the likes of the, the chains that are attaching all this to. This may take a couple of coats, but just be a little patient with it and then you'll have a good finish. With our gold details down, we're going to move on to some silver and we're going to be using Army Painters Shining Silver for that. Again, put a little bit onto our wet palette. Take our brush, and there's not much silver to uh, to actually do on the Davidian model. So we're just going to be looking at areas of interest on the chain sword. So just basically the blade. So we're gonna take that right in. Along there. And then on the other side, we'll do a little less so that the area paint is a little narrower. Or not, we'll just go for it. And 
and just take your time on the top of the blades. With the silver now down, we're going to move back to the gold and we're going to start shading that with Agrax Earthshade. And again, we're just trying to get something nice and quick here. So just going to take some of that out of the pot because the lid doesn't want to stay open, which is a bit typical for me. And then we're going to quickly whiz around all our gold detail and give it a good shade. Now, one quick thing I want to mention here as well, there's a lot of smoke and stuff that's coming off these uh, bundle of sensors that she's holding. Uh, we will tackle those towards the end, but it's only going to be a very simple step. We don't want to add too much complexity uh, to the miniature with that. So always remember that we're trying to just keep this one nice and quick because we have a whole army to paint and we want to get it done in a relatively short space of time. So the Agrax or shade is, is down and dry. I've also added a, uh, a wash of Null Oil to the chain blade uh, just to get that in there as well. What I've also done is added a little bit of it into the mechanical parts of the sword so that that's all a bit more dark and a bit more shaded. So the last step I'm going to do uh, before the miniature is complete is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey Put a little bit of that onto the palette as well. And the aim here is just to paint in or just to give the smoke that's streaming out of these sensors just a bit more shade to them. And that is the last step. And after painting the base and going over the, the miniature just for a little bit of touch up here and there, we have our Davidian finished. So I'm only using this camera angle because I want you guys to remember that this is all about getting the army done quick, getting it done in a way that is striking from the tabletop. So those big panels of white, the red and the, the uh, visible skin and whatnot are what's going to draw your eye first. And particularly if we do a let's play on this, that those are the aspects that you're going to see most often from the angles that we'll be taking it. So remember that that is the aim and that, that if that is the aim, I think we've done a fairly decent job. And uh, same with the, uh, the regular uh, Battle Sister miniature as well. It's all about making them high contrast so that they're high impact. Uh, they, they look good on the tabletop. So there's not really much else to say about that other than remember we're keeping the project simple, we're keeping the paint scheme uh, straightforward and effective. The miniatures in the army will get a matte varnish uh, before uh, they hit the tabletop, so they will probably change a little bit. They might be a bit more punchy depending on how the, the matte varnish dries. But all in all, another miniature to add to the army, and I think the Davidians in particular add a particular nice flair to it as well. They have a lot more red involved, a lot less white. They are going to look different from that tabletop distance as well. And that's really all I can say to it. Of course, guys, please leave your comments down below. Hopefully you're enjoying this, uh, this project as you see it coming together and you're enjoying these little videos to see how uh, a quick, you know, a, a sort of quick high contrast army scheme comes together. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you again in the next one.